How the bloody hell are we guys? Welcome back to Small Kind Ding Repairs and I'm here today to answer the most asked question this channel has ever had. The last video I released was a restoration of a land surfboard. So at the end of that video there was a scene during the final sanding of the board where I was rubbing a black material all over the board and the comments just filled up with people asking A, what is that black stuff? And B, what does it taste like? Which I thought was really weird. I don't know why people would be asking what it tastes like. It seemed like such a strange question, but everybody was asking it. I'm at the very least gonna tell you what it is. So the black stuff that I'm rubbing all over the board is called a guide coat or a control powder. And it's an automotive product. It's meant for automotive painters. Panel beaters do use it as well, but primarily automotive painters will use it. So this guide coat is meant as a product to assist those painters in getting the best possible finish on the car's paint job as they can. So the way it works is you can take the lid off and on the bottom here of the lid, there's a little sponge. Inside this pot is a black powder. So we can just flip it upside down, get a bit of it on that sponge, take it off and then rub it on the board. So we're gonna do a little test patch on this board in front of us. It's not a blank, this is a glass board. And the whole board here has been sanded with 120. The next step after sanding something with 120 would be to remove those 120 scratches with 240. The difficult thing in the sanding process, especially on a color like white, is how do you know when you've removed all of the 120 scratches with your 240 and it's safe to move on to 320. Hmm. The way this product works is it's a really fine black powder. And when we take the product and we rub it onto our area that's been sanded with 120, it's going to kind of dye the area black. And this really fine powder is going to fall inside each and every one of these 120 scratches. The idea then is we can sand that black area with our 240 and any 120 scratches is going to be filled up with this black guide coat so that's going to show us each individual 120 scratch. Once all the black disappears then we know we're only left with 240 scratches. We can then reapply more guide coat and do the same process with our 320 sanding all of our 240 scratches away. So after a quick pass over with the sander here we can see these lines, and these are 120 scratches. They're actually swirl marks from my orbital sander. Not only that, but if we move up, you can see here there's something going on. We have low spots. So these are actually lows in the resin. So it's not a scratch. It's probably a brush mark or maybe a little bit of a fish eye from when this epoxy was poured. So looking at our surface now, all of our 120 scratches have disappeared but you can see we still have these low areas in our resin. Because these are low spots and not scratches, we're sanding the lows out of the area. So now that we've sanded all of that guide coat away, I know that this area is left with only 240 scratches. So the next step would be to apply more guide coat and continue the sanding with 320. This guide coat is waterproof, so for me, once I get to the 400 stage, I start wet sanding, and I can continue to use the guide coat with water. It does hold on, so it will sand away, not wash away. Would I recommend using this product? Generally, no, I wouldn't. So this is the kind of stuff where it is 100% worthwhile buying it, and having it in your workshop or in your shed if you're working at home, because when you need it, it's gonna be really good to have. But I don't use it very often. The downside to this guide coat powder is once it gets in something, you will never get rid of it without sanding it away. Say you were working on an old board like the land and maybe there was a bit of exposed weave. <laughs> or a little pinhole in the resin, this will sit in between that cloth weave and it will fall in that pinhole. And the only way to get rid of it is to sand it and you may end up over sanding an area just trying to get rid of this, especially on a bright white board like this one. 
I would definitely recommend having it on hand, but like I say, you're not going to use it with every job, but when you need it, it'll be good to have it. As to the question of what does this product taste like? Nice. Word on the street is it tastes a little bit licorice -y. There is one other question that I want to answer. Thank you, and I haven't even opened it. But it only just came through, so I thought while I'm making this video, it might be a good time to touch on this. The question or the comment said, Love this video. I'm not a shaper and I do my own repairs in my garage. However, I struggle to identify the materials my boards are made of. I think four out of five are PU. It always impresses me that you know what you're working with just by looking at the board. Any tips for the uninitiated to distinguish PU versus EPS? Have you already done a video on this? Thanks. Thank you for the question, C Rob M2E. Um, no, I haven't done a video on it. So before we go into the workshop and look at some boards, let's first identify EPS foam and PU foam and have a look at what they look like without fiberglass over the top. And here are two that I prepared earlier. So our first one that we'll look at is this one. This is EPS foam. Now you've probably seen this foam before if you've ever bought a new TV or a computer or anything that came packaged in a box, it'll normally come packaged in EPS foam. It's really cheap, it's soft and spongy. This one actually has a layer of micro balloons screened over it so it's not as soft and spongy as normal. But you can kind of see it's made of individual large balls. <laughs> Man, I am stoned off my ass! And if we look at the finished area here, you can see once it's all planed down, there's kind of this hexagon sort of pattern. So it's flat, but you can see each one of these individual hexagons, sort of near my thumb, they're all individual beads of foam. So the reason it's so easy for water to channel through EPS is because each one of these balls is individual and although microscopic, between each one of these balls of foam, there is a channel, like a little maze running from this end to this end. And then if we look over at this side, this is PU foam. PU foam is incredibly dense. Are you being intentionally dense? Huh? It is very tight knit, which is why it doesn't channel water the way EPS foam does. And once it's sanded, it's incredibly smooth. So now that we've looked at the foams outside of fiberglass, let's go into the workshop and we'll have a look at what I look for to determine if a board is gonna be epoxy resin or poly resin. All right, let's grab a board off the rack. So the first thing I'd look for, which I probably won't be able to film, but we know what the texture of PU foam looks like. As predicted, it's gonna be almost impossible to film, but I can see the foam because this is just clear fiberglass. So I can kind of tell that it's a poly foam. The tricky thing when it comes to a board like this is one of the dead giveaways with an EPS epoxy board is carbon fiber. A lot of EPS epoxy boards will get rid of the wooden stringer and they'll use carbon fiber as their stringer. But those are normally really wide pieces of carbon fiber. This carbon fiber on the other hand is really thin little strands. And if we look incredibly closely, which I may or may not be able to film, I kind of can. You can see just there, there is wooden stringer. It is a little easier to see at the tail end, but in between the two middle pieces of carbon, you can just make out that there is a wooden stringer in it. Although the rule isn't 100%, it is more common than not that if there's a wooden stringer through your surfboard, it's a poly surfboard. Even if it's being glassed with epoxy, if it's got a wooden stringer, it's almost a guarantee, not all the time, but almost a guarantee that you're working with a PU blank. I quite often get called by customers who ring me and they say, I've just dinged my surfboard, there's a hole in it, how much is it gonna to cost to fix and how long will it take to fix? And the first question I ask back to them is, is it a poly or an epoxy board? And more often than not, the customer says, mm, I don't know, I think it's fiberglass. 
That answer drives me absolutely insane because both epoxy and poly are of course fiberglass. It's fiberglass with either a poly resin or fiberglass with an epoxy resin. But for me to expect them to know that, that's not really fair. So what I normally say to them is, does your board have a wooden stringer through the middle of it? And then they say to me, what's a stringer? And I say, is there a piece of wood running from the nose to the tail through your surfboard? And if they say yes to that, there's a good chance, I would say a 95% chance that their board is poly. So it's gonna be a cheaper repair and a quicker repair. And if they say no, it doesn't have wood running from nose to tail, then there's a 95% chance that that is an EPS epoxy board. All right, let's step into the glassing bay. And this is probably the worst time for me to make this video because work is incredibly quiet at the moment. So we'll go in here and have a look. So another determining factor is the age of the board. So if we have a look at a board like this, this board pretty instantly screams 70s. If it's from the 70s, it is more likely than not a PU poly board. We can also see there's a wooden stringer through here as well. So I can pretty much guarantee that's gonna be poly. We go over to this lovely Ben Iper here. You look at the board, it's pretty old. It probably predates common EPS or epoxy construction. We have a wooden stringer. And in the case of this one, the damage is so severe that in certain areas, I can actually see the foam through the fiberglass because there's a giant hole in it. We got Bob Davies here, same deal. Bob Davies era, he wasn't working with epoxy. Epoxy EPS was not common in the slightest. We have a wooden stringer, so we're good to go. A little bit of shaper's knowledge can help you out as well. So on this bottom rack here, we have a Roger Hall. Now this Roger Hall had a giant hole from somebody's fin cut into it so I could see the PU foam inside it. So I know that it's PU, but I also know he doesn't make EPS epoxy boards. So even when the customer rings me and says, hey, I've got a Roger Hall and it needs fixing. I don't need to ask, is it EPS or is it poly? Because I know Roger Hall only does poly blanks and PU resin. So that brings us to this, what is called a Superfish 2, holy moly. Now we can't see a stringer and we can't see the foam, but the reason for that is because the whole board is painted. So we take a quick detour into my new to be shop space and have a look at some of my boards. We can see the difference here. This is a resin tint. There's another matching one in here with the same green resin tint, but this board, this board, this board, this beast, this is all paint. There's no resin tint at all on that one, that one, that one, or that one. It's all paint. But the difference between these and that Superfish, other than the obvious, is that the paint is beneath the fiberglass. I could sand this fiberglass like crazy for a repair and I'm never gonna burn away the paint because it is beneath the lamination of the board. Now the reason these boards are painted beneath the glass is because they're both glassed in poly resin. And poly resin, it's pretty simple to glass over paint with. If these two boards were glassed in epoxy, it would be a completely different story. It's a bit of a risk to paint beneath epoxy resin. You really have to use a water-based paint only, and even then it's a gamble to paint beneath epoxy. Epoxy just doesn't like other chemicals interacting with it when it's trying to cure. So for that reason, 99% of epoxy boards and EPS boards are painted on top of the fiberglass. So if we head back into the glassing and painting shed now and take another look at our Superfish. Number two, we know that we can't see the wooden stringer. We know that we can't see the foam beneath the glass because the whole thing is painted over the top. So what does that tell us? It tells us that this board is more than likely EPS and epoxy because these big board manufacturers know that the risk of putting this paint beneath their epoxy lamination and on top of their EPS foam it's too much of a risk. So they take the safer option and they, in this case, shape and they mold the entire board. And then at the very end, they apply their paint. But there is one other part of this board that's gonna tell us whether or not we're dealing with EPS and epoxy or PU and poly. 
If we come in here and have another look at the dimensions, we can see repair with epoxy. I would say maybe 75 to 80% of EPS and epoxy boards are going to have that written on them. And that brings us back to the board that we started with looking at our guide coat. So let's look at all the identifying factors of this board. It has a wooden stringer and you guys probably can't see it, but I, if I look really closely through the fiberglass, I can see that it is a PU foam because we don't have all of those little hexagons and a weird texture. Now this is one of my buddy's first boards that he ever made. It's actually his 11th, it says on the stringer, so we're not gonna pick on him too hard, especially because I'm guilty of doing the same thing. But what he's done in this case is he's taken a PU blank, just like these ones up here, and he's laminated the whole thing in epoxy resin. And his crime is he hasn't written anywhere on this board that it was laminated in epoxy resin. So if this board were to come into my workshop and I didn't know the board shaper and I didn't have a personal conversation with him, I would look at this board and immediately assume that it's a poly lamination and I would begin repairing it with poly. It's not gonna take long for me to get really angry at the shaper of this board because once I start applying poly onto it, I'm probably gonna have bonding and curing issues with my poly resin. And I'll be scratching my head wondering why I can't feather the edges of my resin, maybe even why I can pick up and peel off my cured cloth that I've sanded and prepped the area fine. And then I'm gonna curse this shaper's name for putting epoxy over a PU blank and not telling me by writing it on the stringer. Then I'm gonna think back to all of the boards I've glassed for myself and for customers, and I haven't labeled them as such. So I'm as guilty as anyone else. But if you're ever planning to glass a poly blank with epoxy resin, please, for your local bin repairer, write it down, it's epoxy resin, or repair with epoxy, or whatever you're gonna do. So in this case, I would very likely get it wrong. I would get halfway through the repair. I'd crack the shits. <laughs> and start over with epoxy. It does happen every now and then. I would estimate maybe five times a year, a board like this comes to me. I get halfway through the repair and then realize, I think this is epoxy. And more often than not, you can look up the board shaper on Instagram message them directly, send them a photo of the board and say, hey, I think you might have glassed this in epoxy, is it true? And they say, yes, that is epoxy. And then you know, shapers are pretty forthcoming with that kind of information for us lowly ding repairers. Once you get that answer, then you can cuss them out and say, you owe me $100 worth of materials because you never labeled your board and then you can be really rude and crack the shits. So Mr. C Rob M2E, I hope that helps answer your question. One other thing I would quickly say is a lot of people say, if you're not sure, just give it a sand and give it a sniff and you'll be able to tell by the smell and supposedly the burning sensation in your nose, which one it is. Uh, ma'am, your nose. That may work, I don't actually know, but I can't smell poly or epoxy anymore. Much like a cigarette smoker, if one walks into a room with you and you're like, holy crap, you stink of cigarettes, but they're just around the smell all the time, so they can't smell cigarettes anymore. And so it doesn't work for me. I can't tell by the smell what a board is laminated in. Hey, I also want to throw out a thank you to both Pedro and Gareth. These are the two newest members of the Small Kind Ding Repairs channel. So thank you guys. Um, you're the handsomest of devils and really appreciate you. I also want to thank all of you guys. The last video that I put out, that land restoration, I'm only a small channel, guys, and I'm only a small business, and honestly, I'm not a center of attention type of person, so this is kind of a weird thing for me to be doing, but that video went off the charts. Not Mr. Beast kind, but definitely for a channel of my size, holy crap, a lot of comments, a lot of sharing and liking, and all s subscriptions, holy moly, I'm almost, yeah, just couldn't believe it, guys. It was 
yeah, too much, but in a good way. So I wanna thank you guys for all your feedback on that video. Agree with me or disagree with me on EPS and versus PU, that's all fine. I'm just really grateful that you watched the video and you liked it and it was enjoyable. So thanks for that. And in all honesty, um, I was a little nervous to put out another video after that one because that one did so well and I kind of felt a lot of pressure that well, the next one has to be better and bigger. Yeah, so it, it put a bit of pressure on me. So I've sort of taken a step back for a minute to just soak it all in and I thought this was maybe a better video to put out next because really it's just answering some questions from you guys and there's no real in-depth voiceovers or editing or anything like that. So I hope this ties you by. Thank you all again. Thank you to the members of the channel. Thank you to the subscribers of the channel. Thanks for your comments and all the rest. And I do have more videos on the way. I have the footage piled up. So I just need to make sure that um, it's not at least substantially worse than that last video I put out. That's gonna be the goal. So until next time guys, I hope you're all really well and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Choo-hoo!